Hey everybody, this is Aaron Murakami with a and Electronic Media and I just want to go over a little bit of uh, Cromre um, information. Um, this is uh, John Bedini's Cromre that Peter Lindemann demonstrated at the 2016 Energy Science and Technology Conference. Um, the conference website is energyscienceconference.com and you can find the presentation that Peter did on this machine at uh, emediapress.com. Um, this side is a Cromery generator attached to the shaft is just a, a DC motor to the right. I'll, I'll show that with a flywheel. I'll show that in a bit. But what I do want to point out is, you know, in the presentation, Peter mentioned you have to build it exactly like this, and that's true. Most people are using permanent magnets right here. It's a lot easier. And in the Cromery patent, he is doing some uh, electromagnets, and he had both versions. And in the permanent magnet version, he can see that the uh, Cromery clearly shows that the magnetic poles need to alternate. If this is south, that needs to be north. Then this needs to be south, and this needs to be north. Or if this is north, that's south, that's north, and that's south. Just as long as they alternate. Um, when Peter says build it, do the windings just like this, he's referring to this one right here, which is what the rotors are. These rotors are wound exactly like what's in the patent here. Okay, And so these two brushes right here tapping um, each of the windings those brushes I believe are isolated from the um, uh, shaft. This shaft I believe is copper and there's little plastic uh, pieces underneath um, the contact for the brush and the way John has it is that there's basically three brushes all the way around uh, 90 degree, you know, uh, nine nine o'clock, noon, and three o'clock, and there's not one at six o'clock. Same way on this side. Um, as this thing was getting moved around and crated and stuff, uh, one of these broke off, which is not a big deal. That just needs to be uh, put back. Um, and the original coupler, this coupler, um, uh, what is this called? This is a a Kushnet company. They don't exist anymore, but you can find these. And this was used, in I believe, in case the drive shaft or the um, prime mover and the generator are not perfectly in alignment. This gives it a little bit of free play, but this thing is real kind of old and kind of hardened and everything. And so I would like to get one like that. But for now, I've got this Lovejoy coupler, and I have this rigged up a little bit so that we do have pretty good alignment. Um, one thing I do want to show is that I did find that there is a, an error in the in the diagram, or actually in the circuit here, and what it is is these fields are supposed to be alternating on the electromagnets if you're using the electromagnet, but if we have the plus from the battery here, um, and that's coming this way, like this, it's going to create north here and south here, but with that plus being available coming down here it's basically um, wound in the same direction which means this is going to be north so the error is that this winding should, if you're using an electromagnetic style which I haven't really seen anybody do that yet except um, in Cromery's original work is that this winding should actually be wound in the opposite direction so again when Peter is saying build it just like this he's talking about this winding right here which are these coils that are spinning as it moves past these magnetic fields here um, and most people are using permanent magnets even this and, and uh, John even had a double stack of magnets across here to just increase the magnetic strength these magnets are pretty much dead you can see that this is a you know uh, magnetic allen wrench you know when you get them all stacked you can get a little bit of a field there but on each magnet itself when these are out these things are pretty much dead so there's very little um, uh, magnetic strength there uh, but in any case I just wanted to point that out that that winding should be in the opposite direction if you want south here and north here and so that's one thing okay so and one thing I just wanted to kind of walk through is just uh, John's build here a little bit um, which these are coned because if you had the full circumference uh, or full diameter like this at this end when it comes here it's going to hit and he did it that way so he can have a pretty tight uh, gap and these gaps are actually not highly uh, accurate 
a little bit tighter on this side than it is on this side but the point is is you want the gaps really to be as uh, tight as possible um, if you do have uh, coils that have the same diameter here as they are here then that means that you need a pole sticking out so that the edge of the spool isn't going to clip your uh, uh, iron uh, laminates so uh, that's just what I wanted to cover there um, I'm gonna run this and I just want to show because um, I don't understand why some people still are skeptical that the thing can speed up uh, when you actually short the output out um, with the output Like it's not the greatest right there, but this is a bridge taking the AC from the wind from the uh, coils out, and this is the direct AC output. Those are going into a bridge, and so these are going to be the DC output. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to short the AC out, and you're going to see that the draw from the input motor is actually going to drop while it speeds up. Um, what that really is is evidence that it's basically a constant current generator and they're supposed to unload the prime mover if they're shorted out. So that part is really not magic. I just don't know that anybody else is really saying that that is uh, what the effect is, but there are some anomalous things that, that happen with this generator that conventional ideas don't um, really explain, but in any case um, this meter shows the voltage and just this shows the current of oh. the input motor here and so what I have here is that the voltmeter for the voltage this right right here is connected to the pos uh, positive and negative input from here I basically have it running on a uh, on a variac right here with this cord and that cord is basically going to this 25 amp bridge and the output of that bridge is going DC straight into the motor Okay, so that's going to measure the voltage of what the what's at the, the motor terminals. And there's a 0.1 ohm current sensing resistor right there that I have this voltmeter across. So we can take take whatever volts is, it's going to be in the hundreds of milli, uh, uh, millivolts. So we go point, you know, three if it's 300 millivolts divided by 0.1 ohms. That gives us a current, which will be in about the 2 amp uh, range for at least the speed I'm going to run it at multiply it by the volts and that's going to pretty much show you um, what the draw is in, in watts as it's running so we can you know do a simple comparison of um, shorted or unshorted and that's pretty much all I'm going to show uh, at least in this video um, we're looking at building this uh, bigger um, what I have right here is um, I just blacken this out to get a better reading on this optical tack um, which is basically taking light, ambient light, and then going into a receiver. So it does not have its own light source that bounces off. It's taking whatever light is available. And this is for remote control airplanes, two, three, or four blade prop. So this is simulating a two blade prop because for every rotation, the light is going to bounce off of here into the receiver and it's going to tell us what the frequency is or what the speed is. And so typically, if it's just sitting there, it'll usually show about, you know, 360, which is. Um, from the 60 cycle uh, coming off the uh, the lights so anyway I'm gonna turn this on the variac is set uh, it's about maybe about 12 volts or so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on okay it's unshorted right now We can see we're at about 100, or actually it's times 10, so that's 1,560 RPM. So between 153 and 156, so we'll say about 1,550 RPM. Okay, so the current draw right now. is 200 millivolts so we're going to go 0.2 volts divided by 0.1 ohms so we got exactly two amps there I obviously didn't have to use a calculator for that but that's just to show you the, the concept 
times 13.15 So 2 times 13.15 volts. Okay, we got a little bit higher draw. I'll just let that settle for a second. Just getting kind of warmed up. And we got a little bit higher speed here. 1560 to 1590. Uh, okay, so it looks like it's settling at about 1560 RPM. Just about 1580 RPM or so. 1570, 1575. Okay, so now that it's kind of at a happy spot right here. Uh, 0.195 volts divided by 0.1 ohms, 1.95 amps times 13.27. Volts. So we got 25.9 watts, 400, uh, 1560, say 1570, 1580 RPM unshorted. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this alligator clip and I'm going to short the AC out. You can hear it change instantly and so the voltage on the input motor actually goes up, but the current actually starts dropping. And we're going to see that the RPMs have increased. Let's give it a minute to settle. Sixteen twenty. Sixteen fifty. So it's about sixteen thirty, sixteen forty. So we got about a fifty sixty RPM increase by shorting it out, while the total power um, definitely drops in loading the motor. Even though the voltage went up, it didn't went go up as high as the current drop proportionately. And so now we're only down to 100, you know, 0 0.171 volts divided by 0 0.1, 1.71 amps times 13.68 volts. So we're at 23.39 um, watts. So it definitely sped up while we shorted it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unshort it here we can see that the input voltage goes down while the current goes up and obviously it's slowing down and we can see that on the tachometer so we got 23.4 shorted so we got 0 0.1945 let's see 0.195 divided by 0.1 times 13.32 is 25.9 Seven. So we have uh, more watts to go a, um, a slower speed, unshorted, or if it's shorted. It takes less to go faster. So again, you know, that's what that's showing is that this is a constant current generator, and a constant current generator shorted should unload the prime mover when it's shorted. So anyway, that's the video for right now. We have uh, other coils and stuff that we're getting put together. We're going to build a larger version of this and the goal is to run it on a zero force motor. Um, once we get the efficiency of that higher, you can go to energyscienceforam.com and check out um, Yaro Stanchak's post. She's kind of heading up some of the more advanced builds in the zero force motor project showing the mechanical work he's doing. He doubled the mechanical work for the same elect electrical by increasing the magnets in relation to the, the size of the coils. And so little by little, the improvements are coming along and we're understanding the motor better. Um, so him and James McDonald and uh, there's somebody, uh, Iron, 
I underscore R O N. Um, they're sharing some of their work and so are some others. So if you're interested in a zero force motor, definitely go to energyscienceforum.com and then look for more updates on this crom ray here because this project is moving forward and highly recommend you get Peter Lindemann's presentation on this and also in the advanced SG book, the Bedini SG um, uh, beyond the advanced uh, one um, in that book there's quite a bit of information on this technology and a lot of people really um, there's, there's very few who are really taking advantage of it and so anyway hope you enjoy that uh, this is going to be reconditioned a little bit put this back in the best working order that it can get in that we can see after a little bit it was sitting at 162 it's more steady at 165 so it's just kind of uh, getting warmed up here well 162 So we'll be posting more as we can, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of uh, an idea what the crom ray is about. Um, I'm not powering any loads or anything or doing input-output tests, um, but in Peter's uh, presentation, on that particular presentation, you can see that the input to the motor um, compared to the load of the battery being charged in the output um, was operating at about a COP of about 2.0, which means twice as much was um, measurable going to the battery compared to what the input motor was drawing. And so when you power a load or you shorten the output, um, there's a lot of these nonlinear characteristics to it that um, it does not load it as it should. And also, if you slow it down, the current also stays um, kind of the same. And you can kind of see that in, um, on the scope. Stay tuned for more.